Labour leadership results are in, with Jeremy Corbyn trashing Owen Smith. Can Labour move on now or will they go into oblivion? Heads of government converge on New York to sort out world crisis of Syria and the refugee crisis. Demonstrations again in America, yet again and again. Police killings of black men, what is the state of black America? Donald Trump, heading for the US presidency. Is it over for Hillary? We can never leave out the EU and Brexit. Is the state of the European Union strong? Finally, for years, there has been the cry that Marcus Garvey should be posthumously pardoned for his wrongful conviction for the use of the males in furtherance of scheme to defraud. Will it happen this time? And we are joined by Dr. Floyd Mellon, who is a political scientist and special advisor, who will be giving his insight on some of the top stories from this week's news. Welcome to the show today, and I'm joined by Dr. Floyd Millen, who is a political scientist and a former advisor to the Metropolitan Police Authority. Dr. Millen is the former head of Identity Assurance and Identity Service at the UK Post Office. In 2014, he was appointed as Special Advisor to the Cabinet Office, Gov.UK, Verify Identity Assurance Programme. Floyd also is a peer reviewer and former member of the UK's Economic and Social Research Council, and he sits on the Council of the Hansel Society. Floyd, listen, thank you for joining us today. Um, so much in the news this week. Yes. I mean, American, UK, but let's start with the UK. Just this evening, Labour leadership results are in with Jeremy Corbyn, trashing Owen Smith, as I said earlier. Do you think Labour is able to move on now? or they're going to go into oblivion? What do you think? Well, I think <clears throat> Labour can move on, mm -hmm. but the decision is in the hands of the members. Yes. If they, of the parliamentary members, if oh, they decide to support the elected leader, then all roads lead to Rome. Mm. But my fear is that they may not. I think a point comes in time when uh, a party has to decide whether it will, it will uphold democracy yes. and push forward to the goal, which is to get into the office. But this is a classic case of democracy in action, isn't it, at the same time? Yes. <coughs> There's a famous saying which, um, if democracy changed anything, we would ban it. And this is a classic case, and we're going to talk about the EU later on, yes. where <coughs> there's been a democratic process, people have voted yes. 12 months ago, and for some reason, valid reasons, I'm not saying the reasons aren't mm. valid, there's been uh, an attempt to undo that yeah. using a process. But again, mm. we've now got the results today and that reaffirms Jeremy Corbyn as the leader. Yeah. And therefore, those who sign up to the Labour Party, mm. if they want to be a credible opposition, um, and it's important for our democracy mm. that we have uh, a, a, an official opposition yes. that's ready and fit to, to take on board, to, to, to take on the government in time. Yes then it's incumbent on the Labour Party, the parliamentary yes. members, to support the leader until such time. And that may be an election yes. um, where he is proved to either be a winner or a potential loser. But it's very interesting. I mean, I mean, Jeremy Corbyn said this is the only political part with a, a mass amount of membership within the EU, Europe, yeah, 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 Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 600,000 members, 500,000 actually voted. And Jeremy, uh, I think he got 380 something. Yes, he, he got 61.8%. 61.8%. Yes, that's right. So, um, so the reality is this um, if you're a member of a political party and yes. you become um, a leader of a party mm. and you have your, 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 your shadow cabinet and yes. your, 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 your organizational structure behind you, one of the key questions that any leader is asked is what does success look like? Yes. One of the first responses in that is to get a hold of the reins of government, to go into government. One of the second questions that uh, comes out of that mm. is growing the membership, getting people mm. engaged and politically mobile and motivated. 600,000 membership is an unprecedented move yes. in, in, in European politics, in <coughs> British politics. Yes. So, you know, for all intents and purpose, this is a successful campaign. Now the focus needs to be on dealing with and addressing not only the issues that individuals face on a day-to-day -day mm. basis, but engaging in Parliament. And with such a huge swathe of members, members mm. behind it, parliamentary uh, uh, members of Parliament and members of wider uh, Labour Party need to now begin to work towards whatever they see as their ultimate end. So do you think they will not, not fall in line? 
Unfortunately, I don't think they will. <clears throat> I think the detractors will remain detractors. Yeah. If it is the case that if um, the person that an individual supported did not win, then the question is, if your raison d'etre is to support yes. a party, yes. then by definition, the party must stand above any individual candidate. Therefore, yeah. all members of the Parliamentary Labour Party should stand behind whoever has been elected as a leader. That's my fundamental yeah. point. If it is the case, sorry, yes. finally, that people are arguing that Jeremy does not believe in parliamentary democracy, yes. if you as an MP decide not to support him, then the question is, do you believe in parliamentary democracy? Because the ultimate aim is to get into government. So I think it's incumbent mm. all MPs now to put aside their mm. individual concerns and begin to work towards that one goal. Rally behind the leader. Absolutely. The Conservative Party showed how they did that, how it should be done. Very in a, quickly in and a, very effective. In, in a quick and efficient way. It's now time with the country in such a disarray mm. that the Labour Party's stop the squabbling and begin and, to and, and, it's, and it's very important for a country like the UK or any democracy to have a very effective opposition. And so far, the Conservative Party, the government, has just been going full steam ahead with no very Absolutely. clear... Absolutely. And, 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 and whilst the media has been very much against Jeremy Corbyn, yes. you know, all the, you know, the ammunition has been stacked up against mm. him, but I think as a party, each party, whether you're Labour, whether you're Conservative, mm. you need to stand behind your leader. At some point, you need to look at what, what is the prize mm. in this? What do you hope to achieve? And put aside, you know, those childish things yes. which so easily beset so a political party. Th there's also the other school of thought uh, whereby it is good to have a, a massive membership within the, your political allegiance. But at the same time, you're not trying to win your party, really. You're trying to the wider win country. the wider country. Well, well this, is the, this is the litmus test for Jeremy. Mm. And, and quite rightly, people question whether he has the ability, mm. the reach to, to, to capture the nation as a whole. Yes. And I think that is a question that, that, that is yet to be answered. Notwithstanding, you can only make it harder if you fail to support yes. the leader. If people get behind the leader, mm. then at least, you know, you're... In Britain, we do not have a presidential system. Yes. We have a parliamentary, a party yes. system. On that basis, therefore, we are not electing an individual. Mm. In your constituency, when you go into the ballot box, you're not going to be ticking on Jeremy Corbyn. You're t you're unless, ticking, unless you're a Liberal in Islington. In yes. You're going to support, or not, your local MP. Yes. Therefore, we do not have a presidential system. So people and the media need to actually understand that whether you select Jeremy or not, an individual mm. will vote on the party and their local MP. And that's why it's incumbent on each MP, each councillor, to stand their ground mm. and support, you know, obviously, the, the, hopefully the, part, the, the policies that Jeremy puts forward yes, will be yes. consistently positive, yes. but to support the movement of, of, mm. of, of Labour because it's not a, a presidential mm. system. And therefore, that goes, you know, to, to, that opinion is for the Labour Party as well as it's for Conservative. You need to be, be, mm. support your leader at the end of the day. So therefore, it's a testing time now for Labour and the proof is going to be in the pudding. Yeah, absolutely, in the eating of that pudding. Right. Yes, the, that, yes. So therefore, as we can see now, is that uh, action has been done and it's now time for them to really make their move. Yeah, I mean, you know, people, uh, you know, I've heard um, members talking about how they love the party, they've been a member of the party for years, mm. and they want to see the party progress, but for me, there's no but. It's simple, you, if you have a leader, the same in any organisation, you, you have a leader, yes. and you support that leader until such time mm. as processes, procedures, or time mm. dictates that that person is no longer in that, in right. that position. And the ultimate goal of any political party is to get into government. Mm -hmm. If that is the aim, then you move hell, heaven and hell uh, mm -hmm. to, 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 to get to that, to, to get that place. That's my view. Okay. You know? Well, that's good. Well, we wish him all the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, Floyd, the other thing is that the head of governments all over converge on New York to sort out world crisis, Syria, the refugee crisis. Mm. I mean, where is that going? I mean, what's happening there? I mean, first they're saying... First, uh, ceasefire, then AIDS, mm. AIDS um, are being shot, and, I mean, yeah. blown up. Comfort, yeah. we, I mean, we barely had a ceasefire, number one. Yeah. The ceasefire barely got into, mm. into, into motion. Yes. And then the bombing of the, 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 the aid, aid convoy. Yes. I mean, there's many views on this, and I'm very cautious when uh, attributing blame. Um, Everybody's jumping on Russia's back. Yeah, America it? has quite clearly said they know who did it. Uh, Russians have said it's not them. 
I live in London. I'm, you know, I have no I access to intelligence. Yes. So I'm reading what the newspapers, what the media are telling us. I'm mm -hmm. hearing what John Kerry and others are saying. So as an individual, I'm very cautious about attributing blame mm -hmm. um, because we've seen over many years where yes. you know decisions are made based on flawed information, mm -hmm. where people jump on a bandwagon because it's politically expedient. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's about lives. Individuals are losing their lives and yes. losing their homes. And the problem in this Syria crisis is that it is a proxy war. We have certain states standing behind particular mm -hmm. parties, back in different factions, you know, some back in the moderate, and I contest that there are no, there's no such thing as a moderate. Mm -hmm. A moderate today, you know, can be an extremist tomorrow. You know, if well, you well, they're saying that uh, the, the creation of ISIS, the creation of a lot of these yeah. groups. So, so you know, if, yeah. if a state, if, if the British or American government change their stance tomorrow morning, those who are deemed to be moderates would be deemed to be outside mm. beyond the pale. Mm. Um, the Russians are obviously sorting out their vested interests in Syria. Many commentators have asked, um, um, the Russians are only looking after themselves, mm -hmm. so does every other nation. Mm -hmm. So my issue here is the proxy war that's been fought can go on for many, many, many years, because yes. neither the West or the Russians will run out of resources anytime yes. soon. So, you know, there needs to be the wisdom of Solomon, you know, the parting of the waves, mm -hmm. because this is going to go on ad infinitum. So do you think, like, um, I know Barack Obama um, would really hope for this to be a part of his legacy? Um, and he stood in the United Nations recently and also made reference to the little boy in America yeah. um, who wishing for that boy who we saw covered yeah. in mock to, yeah, yeah. to come to America, you yeah, know, yeah. and to take care of him. And he was saying that the world really need to actually change. But then you've got the whole influx of migrants yeah, yeah, and then yeah. the whole European crisis now, which sort of fueled the Brexit yeah. thing. I mean... Well, by definition, where you have yeah. war, poverty, you know, countries being bombed, yes. um, big nations, strong nations taking sides, mm -hmm. you've got faction, you've got religious faction, you've got geographical faction, yes. you've got um, different sects, sects, actually. You're going to have migration. People mm -hmm. in, are inevitably going to move, you know. Um, if you bomb Syria, if we, you know, um, stranglehold Syria, mm. you know, whatever we do, there's going to be migration. And, yeah. and we need to get to grips with this. Yes. You know, there is a school of thought which says people do not realise the cost of war until the cost of war sits at their borders. Yes, yeah. I.e. when migration begins to impact on you mm. in your leafy suburbs mm. or in your um, inner city areas, mm. then you begin to realise the cost of war. But by then it's too late. So do you think then the United <clears throat> Nations has any teeth, Ban Ki Moon. I mean, unfortunately, the United Nations at one point yeah. it did have teeth. It, it, when it goes to war, I find. Yeah, it does have teeth, but unfortunately, it's only as strong as its members. Yes. And um, Ban Ki Moon has made some very, very strong statements. But also, the United mm. Nations has to try to uh, plough a, mm. a fair furrow through this. And, and at the end of the day, Russia, um, America, mm. Iran, and to, to a lesser degree, mm. Britain. Are the main protagonists within wow. this. Wow. So whatever happens with the uh, moderates on the mm. ground and the extremists, or with Assad, you know, it's the it's the, it's the nation yes. surrounding them. They are the key players, wow. and I I do think um, that Iran has a big role to play in this. Yes. They are involved, and therefore that complicates the whole scenario. Well, again, black men, two black men, three black men being mm. killed in America, demonstrations. Um, What's happening? What's, what's your view? What's happening with the state of black America, with a black president? Mm. Well, the interesting thing is this has been going on for many, many, many years. It, mm. This has never stopped. Mm. The challenge is now that not only do we have mobile devices, which we can instantly yes. record and upload. That's the first um, innovation in, in our interaction mm. uh, in, in the modern world and which individuals are using to um, promote this. Mm. But the critical thing is the media are also now showing an interest. Mm -hmm. You know, one could argue that, you know, the summer is a silly season mm -hmm. in, in terms of media and politics. So yeah. there wasn't much to report. Yeah. So all of a sudden in the summer, the media is grabbing hold yes. of these things. So they, but these have always been going on. Um, but, but, but I think one of the interesting things is, is how we look at what's happening. So you actually mentioned we have mm -hmm. a black president. I've just finished writing a book on which looks at from the, the birth of America. Mm -hmm. It's a comparative analysis of policing and accountability mm -hmm. in Britain and the United States of America. And one of the things I've explored in that is a critical point, which is this. Yes. 
Even if you have a black president, a black mayor, and a black chief of police, mm -hmm. it does not lessen the numbers of innocent individuals, regardless of their race, Racist. black or white, who are, who are shot or who are um, at the hard end of um, police use mm -hmm. of force. Black men obviously are a high percentage in this regard. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it doesn't change that, one would think it would do, is because we're dealing with structural mm -hmm. um, and learned behavior, mm -hmm. behaviors. These stand outside of any individual. Mm -hmm. So there's a culture within any police service in, to be part of that community. Mm -hmm. You've got to work in a certain way. There are a number of other reasons, which is that black officers tend to be on frontline duties more than others. Mm -hmm. And I've researched it quite, quite in depth. Um, and, and so there's a number of things that will ensure that this continues yes. unless there are a number of strategic changes, which is around the culture within police services, which is also is around the mm -hmm. fear that police officers experience when they walk up to mm -hmm. an individual and they're uncertain. So there's a culture of uncertainty, which then brings a culture mm -hmm. of fear. A and, black also, yeah. and also, uh, one of the school of thought is that it's how they're trained. I mean, the, I mean, yeah. you are defined um, police officers shooting someone in their leg or whatever is always shoot to kill. Yeah, yeah. So there's unless, a, they are, unless they are terrorists. Yeah, you're, so yeah. officers are trained to yeah. disable yes. um, an individual because of a threat to life or mm -hmm. a potential threat to life. Um, but we've seen cases where police officers do not shoot to kill. Yeah. But the challenge is A, about the training, but also citizens have the responsibility as well mm -hmm. because, you know, um, the way you interact yes. with an individual will dictate how that interaction potentially can end up. And I looked at some of the, some of the percentage of yeah. how compliance or non-compliance mm -hmm. um, can impact on that as well. But with the demonstrations <laughs> at the same time, the demonstrations are wrecking havoc in the cities, yeah. um, so the same cities are being demonstrated, um, destroyed. At the same time, yes, insurance will cover that. Yeah. Um, so people are really angry now. They are, and it's inevitable that yeah. there will be some level of, um, not only discontent, but mm. civil action as a result. When we look at this, we can go back to the 1960s and the civil rights mm. movements. This is, in fact, no different. Mm. Um, some have argued, well, I won't express everything yeah. that I've written yeah. about, but essentially we are gonna see more of this potentially, unless strong action can be put in place to, to, to... I mean, America already have a couple of things in place. They have early intervention systems, mm. EIS, which should be able to track and understand when an officer is, you know... Going off. ...that way inclined. They Many wear, wear, wear body um, 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 Cam cameras. Um, but there are a number of other things that need to be put in place. And, and Britain also, mm. we need to not rest on our laurels because mm. things are happening every day which are antagonising, which are challenging i mean the and recent <coughs> one where that police officer was yes. banging on the the cart and the, using his knife and cutting the window yeah, this is right you know but i want to uh, jump right over um to the pacific because since we're on the demonstration in america uh, you mentioned about strong action strong action is donald trump the strong action <laughs> i well, mean yeah. i mean uh, what i said earlier i mean the signs are showing that he's leading to become the next U.S. president. Yes, well, in relation to Clinton and, and Donald Trump, Donald Trump seems to be making, as they say, fair weather. Yes. The wind is blowing in his direction. Yes. And I would, I think he has a very good chance of winning. Mm. Um, in terms of the specific challenges that America faces, mm. on, on, on one side of the spectrum, and, and this, is all, this is all about uh, politics and economics, on one side of the, mm. the spectrum, he, he's arguing he will make America great again. Mm. So he's going to apply his business knowledge, yes. skills, however you want to define yeah. that, to do trade, to, 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 you know, to make, you know, potentially put an industrial strategy in place. Mm -hmm. Many will see that as good. Many will say, in fact, That's we may we dislike his politics, yes. but we need to be a great trading country again. Mm -hmm. So many will vote on that principle. On the other side of things, his lack of political nuance and, mm -hmm. and etiquette mm -hmm. will force many others to say, not tonight, you know, we're not really going to vote for you. But I yeah. do think he, he, is, he seems to be making fair weather. And the fear is that Hillary, which uh, for many of us, you know, mm. you know, will break many, many glass ceilings. Mm. She's potentially a, a great president. Mm. There's concern about her history, about the lack of openness, transparency. And feel that she's in the hands of corporate uh, giants. Absolutely. And Donald Trump, no one has to fear that he's in the hands of corporate giants mm. because he's a corporate giant himself. himself yes. So he's in his own hands. He used to have them in his hands. This is right. <laughs> and, and, you know, he did make an interesting statement the other day. Yeah. And he said to black people, you know, your schools are 
not good. He used mm. the C word, uh, mm. C R A P. Mm. He says your your lives aren't good. You know mm. you've been shot by etc. So why not vote for me? Why what not do you, try? Why yeah. what do you have to lose? And I must admit that was a compelling, you know, argument. it was a compelling argument because he is absolutely right. For many people of ethnic minorities and in America, their life has sadly not improved significantly. So do you think then that the Democrats and even like the Labour here, as some of us taken the black board for granted. Yeah, they have. They absolutely have. Um, but before they took the black vote for granted, mm. they took the working class vote for granted. For granted. In, in, in Britain, our working class, mm. working class in America is defined slightly different. Mm. They've taken the working class and, and the black vote for granted. Mm. And what people want is aspiration. They want something to look up to. Mm. And you know, other parties, the Conservative Party, pre prevented, uh, sorry, presented that inspirational mm. vision. Now, Labour needs to do that. Corbyn needs to begin to understand yes. how can he inspire and provide an inspirational story about what could be. Because what we know that today people are frustrated. They've heard about mm. what could be, manana, manana, but it's tomorrow. It's never quite they happened. Want to see it now. And this is why yeah. I think people like Trump, Corbyn are mm. on the cusp of potentially doing some great things. Mm -hmm. However, for Corbyn in the UK, he needs to be able to sell that inspirational vision. Yes. And he's began to talk about it, but mm. can he deliver that? Can he deliver that? He yeah. doesn't look as though he can, but he may be able to deliver mm. that. Donald Trump in the USA looks as though he can, because mm. he's born off that, you know, that vision, that inspiration. Yes. yes. But the reality is, will he? Well, and not, what's yeah. the cost of him achieving yeah. that? Well, well, it's interesting in regards to, to Europe, because... Um, Trump, um, one of his thinkings recently is saying that I have no problem. I'll work with, go and um, yeah. negotiate deals with um, Britain. And also the Canadian pres um, Prime Minister recently mm. was a good interview and he was really very positive, very upbeat and said, yeah. listen, we'll send out, we have sent 100 um, trade negotiators already. Yeah, yeah. To, you know, it, it's not a, not a big yeah. thing, really. You know? Well, the thing is, you know, we're either in it or we're out yes. of it. And if we're out of it, mm. then we make, you know, the best of the situation. Yes. And therefore, it's incumbent on Brits as a whole mm. to, to, to stand behind the government and do their best to have yes. a positive narrative, yes. a positive interaction. Mm. Countries are not going to turn their back on, 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 on the mm. UK. We're the sixth largest economy, mm. fifth, depending on how you, yes. you, you, you count that. So... You know, we have all to play for, mm. you know, so people need to begin to speak positivity yes. and realise that this is where we are now. Yeah. The electorate has spoken, whether you were for it or against mm. it, let's make the best of it. Let's go out there, let's make money, let's go make a good life for ourselves and let's make Britain great in a positive way. So therefore no more second referendum about the deal? No second referendum. That's a Lib Dem guy. That's, 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 that's so anti-democratic. Yes. You know, there is no final... Um, view of what that of what that thing what that uh, Brexit will be. It's going to be a plethora of contracts, a yes. plethora of negotiations, a plethora of companies doing deals mm. supported by uh, the business department, supported mm. by the UK PLC. Yes. We have all to play for. Thank you very much, Lloyd. Floyd. But listen, before we go, Marcus Garvey. They said that they want to exonerate him. Um, there's a recent petition going around. Yes. I mean, it's going on for a long time. I think I think Mark Garvey should be exonerated now. Yes. It was a, 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 a trumped up charge. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I think we need to get that done. Yes. There, there is a petition going around, and I just hope that people actually. Um, I mean, Support it, it, it's yeah. for the 20th of September, but it's very poorly. Yeah. Um, the figures are very poorly at the same time. But uh, listen, thank you so much. Pleasure. And uh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on In Review. See you next week.